Well, if you ever want to know how really old you are, try explaining a phone book to a 10-year-old. Welcome to Coyote Tales. I am Donna Shannon, sometimes known as Donna Coyote, sometimes known as Coyote or whatever. Maybe someday you will get those stories. But I have a special treat for you today. Yes, indeed I do. You have heard the name, you've heard about the man, but I bring him to you now, the warrior of the wasteland, the Ayatollah of rock and roll Ryan Shannon. Hey, hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, fat, but good. Yeah, well, you're cuddly. I am cuddly. I do. I like the cuddly ones. Yeah. Kevin James, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I brought Ryan in here today to talk about an interesting discussion we've been having all week. So, back in early April 2021, NPR released a survey, which is the top 25 Muppets according to listeners. And some of these we agree with and some of these we seriously question. But let's take a moment to look at the actual parameters they had for the test. So first and foremost, any Muppet from any property or era is eligible. So that includes The Muppet Show, Muppet Babies, Fraggle Rock, Sesame Street, Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, and all the rest. Okay. We counted all variations of Muppet characters in a group. So Gonzo the Great and Gonzo from Muppet Babies both count as Gonzo. Uh, now, some Muppets were counted like a set, like Statler and Waldorf, but others were counted individually. So Bert and Ernie are not counted as Bert and Ernie together. They are counted separately, Bert and then Ernie. Got it? There were some things that were disqualified as being Muppets, the most Famous one of this is, technically speaking, Yoda is not a Muppet. He's a puppet. So what defines a Muppet and a puppet? A Muppet is a cross between a marionette and a puppet. So you got your hand going up through it, but then you also have like sticks. The stick control. Stick control for like how Kermit does blah, 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 yeah. and flops his arms around everywhere. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yoda never flopped his arms around anywhere. No, because he just had one one hand up his backside. Yeah. No, yeah, basically. Basically. Yeah. And technically, Jabba the Hutt is not a Muppet either, even though he was controlled by three people. Okay. That's a good fun fact. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, no. There, are, there are three people who controlled... Well, I uh, knew there was three people. I just didn't realize he was considered a, a, a puppet over a Muppet. He's an animatronic, oh. more along the lines. I don't know. It doesn't say here. Now I'm just spewing bullshit. But it sounded Ass good. Fact. As fact, it sounded good, though. Okay. Um. So, other... Oh, also disqualified human actors in Muppet movies. Tim Curry and David Bowie and John Denver... And Steve Martin, Steve Martin, and all the big actors that did the Muppet movies of the yeah, Robin Williams did a ton. Yeah, he the Rubber all... Man, I don't know his name, the really flexible, flex, flexible weird guy. Okay, yeah, well, no, they don't count. So now let's start off with the, of course, number one, or not number one, but number twenty-five is Count von Count. Agreed. Because you can't have a list of counting things without the count. Agreed. 25 awesome Muppets. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that was stupid. So, who was one of the ones that you were really happy to see on the list? Um, I was happy to see what number is the um, uh, number 19 was, was Sweetums. My my personal favorite in Sweetums. Mm -hmm. Jack not named Jack Job from the Muppet movie. Mm -hmm. was big fluffy he's big guy strong yeah i do like the way they describe him in the list where it's like people sometimes forget about sweetums which is consistent with the way he's left behind in the muppet movie and he has to chase the group all the way to hollywood all he wants is to be included he's fundamentally a big lud with a heart of gold and he could probably protect you in the event of a bar fight so it's you it is me yeah it is Personal favorite, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do reflect best on the things that we relate to the most. Agreed. Yeah, I was really happy to see Statler and Waldorf on the list. 
But it's so funny, I never put this two and two together until you pointed out a couple of years ago that they're an older couple. They go every. That's the dog sneezing. <laughs> You know, allergy season is bad when the dog gets it. <laughs> Sattler and Waldorf, they go to the theater all the time. They hang out together all the time. True. They're a little bit salty. A lot salty. A lot, a lot salty. They're gay. Well, is the big question, is Ernie and Bert gay? I, I, or are they just buddies? The roommates. Roommates. Who share a bedroom. Yeah, should, but they have separate beds. They do have separate beds. I mean, Ernie and Bert are on the list. Of course, they're 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 separated on this list, but they are on the list. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Ernie is at 18, and poor Bert is left behind at 23. Which, I, that's, you know, I can understand that, but I like Bert, and I like Ernie. I like, of course, I like Ernie more. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, even though you're, we are more like Bert and Ernie than Statler and Waldorf. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And and poor Ryan is Ernie, of course. No, I'm Bert. No, Bert. Right. I am Ernie. You're Ernie. I'm Bert. I have no idea what's going on. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a control freak, clean freak. Has, everything has, has a place and there's a place for everything. Yeah. And he looks at me whenever I'm doing my crazy crap and just like... <sighs> Yeah, I shaking get, the head. I get that a lot. Yep. I get that a lot. So, I mean, there are some that we definitely disagree with on here, like Pepe the Crane Prawn. Especially where he's ranked on this. Like I mean, 16. 16th. He's ahead of Dr. Teeth, who, to me, Dr. Teeth. And, and Janice is ranked higher than Dr. Teeth. Dr. Teeth is electric mayhem yeah it's his band he's the leader of the band janice is this crappy high backup singer i i agree animal i think animals third or fourth i agree with that yeah but you know you see animal and you see dr teeth he plays the organ mm -hmm. i like dr teeth i like animal more but yeah mm -hmm. and janice is just kind of like a i always thought janice was a waste of space yeah, she's good musician, good musician, but waste of space. Yeah, I only wouldn't even count her as the musician. But the, I mean, their list here it says, "I'm convinced we all wish we could be just a little bit like Janice, kind of aloof on everything going on around her, and thus eternally chill." It's like, dude, okay, we're in Denver. Half the people here are high. Yeah, they all look and act like Janice too. Agreed. <laughs> Get the hell off the road. <laughs> yes. There are times when it's possible to be too chill. And Oscar the Grouch, of course, made it. Rizzo the Rat. That's another one I don't agree with. Yeah. I do like Grouch. I like Oscar, too. I do like Oscar. He pretty much says his piece and moves on. Yep. And he loves his, and he loves his pets. He loves his pets. Yeah. His inchworm pet. Mm. Let's talk a moment about Cookie Monster. I like Cookie Monster. I've got no problem with Cookie Monster. But what's awesome is the way they wrote this up. So, all Cookie Monster does, he never really eats the cookie. He just mouths it until it goes into crumbs everywhere, right? And just makes the huge mess. <laughs> what Cookie Monster is about is the desire for the cookie. The passion for the cookie. The thrill of the cookie. Uh, so... Yeah, I think we all want that. We want the passion and the thrill and the enjoyment of a thing, but we don't want to have to deal with the mess afterwards. I like cookies, though. Well, I was thinking about something else, but you know, so it's like the thrill, the passion. <laughs> I'm thinking about cookies, and you're thinking about... Children. Children. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm more about the nookie monster. And I'm more about the cookie monster. <laughs> I think I, I think I spied a problem with our relationship here, buddy. <laughs> I like food. The COVID-20 is definitely on this frame. Uh, yeah. Anyways. All right. Let's talk about somebody that I just absolutely hate. I just, I mean, you knew she had to appear on the list, but good God, do I hate Miss Piggy. I just, I've never liked her. She's mean. She's vicious. They, everybody goes, oh, she's such a strong feminist. She's not a feminist. She's a bitch. She expects everything to be given to her. 
Yeah, everything. No, don't look. Don't look at me. My, she always reminded me of my sister. That's another reason why I don't like her <laughs> at all. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Miss Piggy, and never was. Yeah, yeah, and she's even abusive. Yeah, she's abusive to everybody. And, and it was like, okay, if Peppy Le Pew is going to get in trouble for pursuing women without their consent, these cats, she should go to jail for fucking assault. Because as you say something mean to her, and she goes "Hi, yeah," and karate chops you. Yeah, agreed. It's like, yeah, fuck you and your porkiness, right? Just, and then, so she treats Kermit like crap. She hits and abuses him. She's obviously a narcissist, and she hits on every human male within a five foot radiance of her. It's like Kermit. Heaven forbid if he should like look at another frog or anything or whatever but she would probably knock his head off but her oh she can be a slut to whoever she wants Ugh, i hate miss piggy I, I was disappointed in this list at at their second person uh which was gonzo how do gonzo. you feel about gonzo i freaked out honestly by gonzo and it the older i get the more weirded out i get by him because well you know he's a chicken fucker he is a chicken fucker and he mm -hmm. and he has a whole harem of him too chicken fucker from outer space yeah Ooh. i know it's so weird and he's kind of settled down so he's only got like the one main chicken anymore but yeah he's always got like a whole flock of chickens what a yeah. harem of chickens harem of, of chickens yeah I I am the one thing I am disappointed looking at this list. They don't have um, anybody from Labyrinth. That is total bullshit. Sir Didymus was an amazing cat, probably my personal favorite from yeah. Labyrinth. The air is sweet and fragrant, and none shall pass without my permission. Can we pass? Oh, well, um, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a great line i love ludo ludo yeah. i love ludo the rock collar i mean ludo and is amazing character sounds like the the same you know i personal favorite of mine was the dark crystal the mystics mm -hmm. you know and you know I, we my family would start humming oh and everybody would start humming because that's what the mystics did yeah yeah, and Fizzgig. Fizzgig was awesome. Yeah, Fizzgig was pretty damn awesome. And none of those characters made it on here, so I think their whole list is a little bit skewed when you don't have those kind of things in there. And treasure, you know, you have characters from Treasure Island that were strong. Mm-hmm. And you just don't see... A, a Christmas Carol, you had all the characters from A Christmas Carol that weren't even on there. Right, well, they also consider, it was, you know, like Kermit was in that, and he's in all of them, so like... Don't necessarily call them out their, for their roles. Yeah, but there's other strong characters that were in there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, anyways, let's get to obviously the number one on the list. Everybody knows who it's going to be. Yeah, obviously. it's. it's I agree 100%. Yeah, yeah. But interestingly enough, even though that was um, Jim Henson's like personal buddy almost wasn't it ralph was actually his ralph favorite? was his favorite and for years after jim hansen passed away you wouldn't you wouldn't hear ralph in a speaking mood. he he didn't speak he would play the pianos but he wouldn't speak because mm -hmm. it was it was jim hansen jim hansen's personal favorite they've gotten over that now they've gotten over that now yeah and i think kermit is taken over by last i i remember it was taken over by his son mm. so that makes sense yeah but I do like Kermit. You know, I can relate to Kermit quite a bit. I think everybody can a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's not easy being green. It's not easy being green. It's not easy trying to <laughs> steer this <laughs> ship of fools. <laughs> he's, got, he's got control of the ship of fools, and he's done it in multiple years. So. Right, right. So, anyways, that's our take on the top 25 muppets here and you know uh, if you agree with us that's great if not you know or you want to put in your own comments and thoughts you know just you know, go ahead and put them in the comments maybe we'll talk about it maybe we'll even read it i read them i read all comments well now i just look like an asshole <laughs>
Speaking of Muppets, I did ask my nine-year-old grandson what he thought about the Muppets because we're like looking for something to watch on TV. It was like the Muppet show or the Muppet movie or something. And he says to me, I don't like Muppets. I'm like, what? No, you're breaking my heart. Oh. But then I realized his first exposure to the Muppets was actually the Muppet Babies. And yeah, if that was my first uh, foray into Muppets, I would probably have a pretty negative opinion of them as well. But over spring break, he had his friend over and we went out to lunch one day and we had some weird conversations and it made me realize how freaking old I really am. So his friend says that walking home from school, sometimes he gets tired because he has to carry his Chromebook in his backpack. Well, I misheard him. I thought he said a phone book. And I'm like, why are you carrying a phone book around? He goes, no, 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 my computer. I'm like, okay, well, that makes a hell of a lot more sense. And so the boys are like, well, what's a, what's a phone book? I'm like, oh, it's one of those things that, you know, you used to have phone numbers in it. And Maddox goes, oh, no, no, I, I think I get it. So is it like those old phones where you have to like slide it open? It has the keyboard on it. And so it's a phone book. I go, no, no, that's not it at all. A phone book is a thing that used to be delivered to your house. And if you wanted to find somebody's phone number, because we didn't have Google or search engines or any of this kind of stuff, you had to go look it up in the book, which would be filed all alphabetically. And I get these really weird looks like, what the hell are you talking about? I go, yeah, and they were really big. So if you were a short kid, for example, you needed more space on the table. It's like, how many phone books are you going to sit on? Two, three, whatever. And they're like, the books were big? I'm like, yeah, like way big, you know, like three, four inches thick. And they're like, what? And they go, why did they do that? I go, there's no other way to find phone numbers. Um, they're like, well, and you had to buy these things? They're like, no, you, you got them for free. They put a new one on your door every year. They're like, why would they have new ones every year? I'm like, because the phone numbers changed sometimes for different people. But also, advertisers would pay money to put ads or put, you know, highlight their name in the phone book so that people would call for their services. And they're like, people would pay money for that? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> That's no other way to get your product known. Here's a little fun fact for you if you've never known this. If you ever notice services like plumbers and things like that, especially if it's an older established company, they're going to have their name start with A or AA or AAA plumbing or something like that. And the whole reason behind that is the yellow pages, the business pages in the phone book were always listed alphabetically. And typically speaking, people would start calling pump plumbers, especially in emergency situations, and you just started calling the first names on the list. And you would go down alphabetically through the phone book until you found a plumber or whatever who could take care of your needs right then, right there. So that's why all these plumbing companies have awful stupid names like AAA Plumbing because they want to appear higher in the alphabetical list in the phone book. There you go. Dumbest trivia of the day. But that is why that happens. I was trying to explain it to the boys and they're like, that's crazy. Just Google it. No Google, no search engines. And then I really blew their minds. So when I was a kid, Cable TV was just, just coming out, just coming out. And there were no cartoon networks, you know, if you were like homesick alone when I was in junior high or late elementary school, we didn't have cable TV. You only had like maybe six, seven, eight choices from the broadcast TV stations, right? And that meant you only got cartoons first thing in the morning or in the afternoons or all of Saturday morning. And if you were sick, heaven forbid, there was nothing to watch on TV. So you had to watch The Price is Right or soap operas or Sesame Street or something along those lines, even though you're in the fifth grade, right? Somebody's, Sesame Street's a better option than stupid soap operas, believe me. 
and their mind was just blown that there was not 24-7 cartoons and there was not 24-7 movies. It's like my family was a little bit affluent, so we got cable really early on and HBO itself only broadcast from 6 p.m. to 2 (laughs) a.m. Just think about that. No HBO during the day. Holy crap, how weird has our world gotten that you can now stream 24-7 straight directly into your brain by your phone sitting next to you. So, if you ever want to blow a kid's mind and figure out how old you actually are, ask them what they know about phone books and take it from there. Well, that wraps it up for another episode of Coyote Tales. I'm Donna Shannon. Uh, If you like what you heard, give us a like and a follow. Maybe even give us a comment. Uh, If you don't like it, you know, just kind of keep it to yourself. Be nice. You have enough meanness in the world. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.